It seems like everything nowadays is fighting for our attention. Social media, email, apps. This became a huge problem for me. I was constantly distracted. But over the past few months, I've learned how to train my focus. And I've come to realize that we can master our attention if we understand how the brain works. A lot of people think focus is black and white, but it's more like a spectrum. Our brain produces different frequencies called brain waves for different types of alertness. And it's the way we transition between them that determines our focus. The simplest way to train our ability to do this is to think about focus as a three-part process. I call it the focus formula. It stands for prepare, engage, and sustain. We prepare our mind for focus, engage into focus, and then sustain it. Because focus is a process, just like reaching any physiologic state. Imagine going from lying on the floor to sprinting and then back to lying on the floor again. When you get back to the floor, your heart rate and your breathing are still going to be fast, your muscles tense. Our body goes through a process to calm down to a state of relaxation and vice versa. Focus works the same way. The mistake I made was trying to force myself to focus without paying attention to this process, which made focusing really frustrating and even uncomfortable. But to master our attention, we have to think about each part. So let's start off with prepare. We have to prepare our mind and our environment for focus, which can actually be done long before we plan to work. Preparation targets one of, if not the most important contributor to focus, which is clear goals. It is almost impossible to focus if our brain doesn't know what to focus on. I can't count how many times I sat down to get productive, but I didn't prepare what I was going to do, and then I ended up scrolling and wasting time. The prefrontal cortex, right, the part of our brain responsible for executive function or coordinating other parts of the brain to work together, it needs clear goals to focus. With clear goals, it suppresses other parts of the brain that don't need to be active. Imagine going to a supermarket where everything was black and white except for the things that you were looking for. You wouldn't waste time strolling through every aisle or getting stuck at the cookies. Clarity creates focus. Confusion causes procrastination. So to train our focus through preparation, make it a habit that before you dive into important work or studying, you spend a few minutes to prepare a strategy. Brainstorm out a list of to-dos and simple steps to accomplish them. Give your brain something to look forward to achieving. This is also super helpful because our brain loves finishing tasks. Every time we cross something off or make progress toward a goal, we get a small hit of dopamine, which actually helps us focus longer. Prepare also extends to your environment. Clutter is terrible for focus, so clean up your room and tidy up your workspace. Tech is even worse, so turn off the TV, hide your video games, and put your phone in another room. And don't just flip it upside down, keep it out of sight. So many people try to focus with their phone around. And from personal experience, it doesn't matter how much discipline I think I have, if my phone is close by, I'm going to reach for it at some point during my work session. Preparation isn't procrastination, it's cognitive alignment that sets the stage for engage and sustain to run smoothly. Next is engage. This part of the process is where we actively transition from a relaxed state into the flow state, or what people call being in the zone, you know, when you're effortly absorbed in what you're doing. Think of engage as like jumping into a cold pool when it's freezing outside. Like no matter how prepared you are, you know that jumping in is just going to suck. That imagination and mental picture is thanks to a part of our brain called the insula, which connects our emotions to our thoughts. It's what makes us feel that dread, anxiety, and fear about jumping into the cold pool. And it's why the hardest step is the step from stillness. But just as important as taking that first step is considering the way that we take that step. Because how we take that step has a huge impact on our ability to reach and sustain flow. Remember, focus is a process. And to make sure it's as smooth and effortless as possible, we want those first steps to be done properly. Think of it like warming up your brain. Without it, you could risk injury. It's way easier to enter the flow state when our brain transitions seamlessly from beta waves, you know, or our normal consciousness, into alpha and theta waves, which are more relaxed, creative, and immersive. But engaging our brain to overcome the emotional pain of the insula, it requires a lot of effort, which is why those first few minutes of focusing are going to be really uncomfortable and you're probably going to struggle. The problem is a lot of people don't even make it past that discomfort, and they give up before they gotten to the rhythm and flow. So to train our focus through engaging, we can do two things. First, reduce the emotional struggle as much as possible. And second, speed up that transition into flow. One of the best strategies to reduce emotional struggle is to have a ritual, a protocol, you know, like how athletes have a pregame ritual. Ours is called the focus checklist, and we already have a video about it here. But make it a routine to focus by going through the same motions. To speed up transitioning into focus, we can use the golden rule of flow. This comes from Stephen Kotler, one of the world's leading experts in flow. We can quickly introduce positive neurochemicals like norepinephrine, 
endorphins and dopamine into our system by incrementally increasing the amount of challenge with our work. And we keep adding challenge until we find a sweet spot that's just outside of our skill level. And this is because our brain enjoys being challenged and overcoming challenge. But we have to find a balance here, right? Don't immediately dive into complex problem solving because the emotional struggle is going to be really high. So instead, what you want to do is gradually build up to it. Warm up first with like one or two small wins, and then push yourself until you're challenging right outside your comfort level. So as a student, you know, this could be trying a more advanced study technique or practice problems. If you're a creator, you can try implementing a new editing transition or a different storytelling framework. So once we've engaged and acclimated into a state of focus, the final part of the process is to sustain, right? We've already jumped into the pool, we're warmed up, we're focused, maybe even in flow, but we can easily fall out of flow if we don't know how to sustain it. You know, the same way you can't swim forever, you can't be focused forever. Our brain uses up a lot of energy when it's active, so we have to monitor it, which means that training our focus through sustain ultimately comes down to two things. First is to understand the limits of your focus. Our focus is like a muscle. Muscles need breaks in between sets to rest, and they also need longer periods of recovery to grow stronger. If we want to train our focus, we have to treat it the same way. We have to push our focus, but also take breaks when the fatigue starts to settle in. The mistake I used to make was trying to power through like eight or nine hour study or work sessions without taking breaks. I got like wrapped up in the how many hours can you study on YouTube trend. Sure, you can try to focus for that long, but the quality of your work is going to suffer. And if you keep it up day after day, you will burn out. Focus requires recovery. So if you've been in flow for a while and you start to feel fatigue or you're constantly getting distracted, your brain is telling you that it needs a break. And science shows us that on average, this is every 90 minutes or so. This is because our body functions in 90 minute cycles, what we call ultradian rhythms, our sleep cycle, our gut and appetite, our blood circulation, and most importantly, our arousal and focus. So begin to train your awareness of focus fatigue. A good way to figure out your focus endurance is to work using a timer or a stopwatch. Things like Pomodoro are excellent for getting more in tune with your current focus endurance. Second is to manage your level of engagement. While we're focusing, we need to constantly evaluate our emotions and the cognitive burden of the task. For example, if you're studying and you come across a concept that's really difficult to grasp, the insula is gonna light up again and you're gonna start to feel overwhelmed and frustration. If you're studying something really dull, you're going to start to feel bored. Those negative emotions will try to drag you out of focus. So to sustain focus, you have to train yourself to recognize when those moments happen. And instead of letting it pull you out of focus, what you want to do is reframe it in a positive light. Think of it as part of your training. Tell yourself it's a good thing, right? This is what training your attention feels like, kind of stressful. Like who said training was supposed to feel easy? And from there, think about what you can do to get back to the golden rule of flow. If it's too boring, try to add more challenge. If it's too challenging, try to break it apart or ask for help or look at it from a different perspective. So anytime I notice distractions taking over, I simply refer to this formula to figure out what went wrong. Each part of the focus formula is actually much more complex than I went over in this video. And that's what I'm really excited to continue learning about and sharing with everyone in this series I'm doing called focus training. So understanding the focus formula is step one. But what exercises can you actually do to train your focus? Well, you might enjoy this video right here where I talk about three 10 minute exercises, one that targets each part of the focus formula as a great starting point. I'll see you over there.